we are almost in the dark here, just a lot of hazards here. We've seen uh, hours and hours and hours when the planet closed down. I think when we were writing Dog Days, we had this sense that it was this far away event. You know, it felt like a dystopian story. Dystopias always feel far away. A month after the premiere happened, Hurricane Sandy hit, and I realized we are very close to these conditions pretty much all the time. And it suddenly felt like the situation that this family found itself in was a situation that anybody could potentially find themselves in. And the questions are then how they behave in that moment and how they hold on to their humanity became even more vital. When something like Sandy or Katrina hits, you know, how will you behave? Or a pandemic or any of the things that have happened since then, you know, I think Sandy recontextualized the whole piece for me as being even more directly relevant to the world that we were living in and not a kind of abstract dystopian scenario. Dog Days tells the story of a family who is facing impossible circumstances and through which has to try to struggle to maintain their humanity. The family is facing a kind of World War III type situation where they are locked down in their home. Most other members of their community have fled and they are determined to stay in and tough it out. But food is scarce and getting increasingly more scarce and Things, things don't go well. This is explored through the introduction of a character who comes to be named Prince, who is a man, clearly a human, who has decided to live and act like a dog. So we're presented with this dogman character who in many ways maintains a sense of humanity more successfully than some of the people who are living as people in the story. And I think it raises a lot of questions for an audience to consider about you know, how they would do in a situation like that. I first encountered Dog Days uh, in its film version, uh, but it wasn't until I moved to Boston in around 2002 that I realized that Ellie Lee lived in Boston. And so I wrote to her and I said, could we get lunch? I love this film of yours. And she eventually introduced me to Judy Budnitz the author of the short story that both the film and the opera are based on. Fast forward again several years, and I was presented with an opportunity from Carnegie Hall to participate in the Osvaldo Golihov Don Upshaw Young Composers and Singers Workshop. And they specifically asked that I would write uh, something dramatic, a Shana or the start of an opera. Um, I had just recently met the librettist Royce Fabric, and I saw this as a great opportunity for a sort of test run, to write something together, 20 minutes, you know, see how we get along, how we work together. Um, so Alan Pearson was the conductor for the workshop at Zankel. He brought it to the attention of Jed Wheeler at Peak Performances at Montclair. And they, uh, Jed said, we want to commission the completion of this piece. And we want to connect you with the director, Robert Woodruff. Um, and from then, you know, we went on and finished the piece. Writing it was a really interesting experience for me because I was coming out of being a student um, and I think I had just finished school the year before the premiere. And so it was the first time that like, I felt like I had, was really be, being able to implement all of the things I had learned as a composer. I really felt like, you know, anything I wanted to make happen, I could, I had the technical facility to make happen, uh, which was a really nice feeling. So it felt, it felt really good to compose it. Since the premiere, I think the questions raised by Dog Days for me have become even more important. We've encountered productions and audience members who have um, brought new things to it, you know, and brought their experiences to it in ways that we could never have anticipated. Um, when we did the, the when we did Dog Days in Fort Worth, we had an audience member come up to us at intermission and apologizing that she had to leave; she couldn't stay because it was too real because during the war in Europe, she and her family had to eat grass to survive. And in Dog Days, there's a scene where the family eats dandelions after the food has run out. 
This is not a thing that was on my mind when I was writing it. You know, that kind of true life, real experience. Um, and I, I think that is what happens with art. You know, people bring their experiences to it and it changes the work in ways that we can't control. Um, for me, it's really deepened the piece over the last decade to have these encounters with people, to have these different productions illuminate the work in new ways. And I think it's a piece that continues to evolve, you know, in, into its second decade. Um, and I think there's still more to be, to be taken from it and to be brought to it.